Hey everyone, it's me, Corteri. I'm finally back with another video. This one is covering my awful advice for new players to Dark Souls 3. So if you're well versed in Dark Souls 3, if you're on New Game++, plus plus plus, then this video isn't for you. I'm not gonna go over any numbers or fancy charts, no, none of that. This is a basic ass advice video for newbies. Some of this stuff might even seem obvious to anyone, but you still need telling to know. It might seem like the enemies, particularly the larger ones or bosses, attack in some weird, impossible, random pattern. This actually isn't the case. All of them have attack patterns that are disorienting at first, but are easy to pick up on after getting killed six or seven times. Also, learn how to dodge correctly. The enemies can get pretty intimidating and big, but the game operates on this weird system where if you time your dodges properly, you become invincible and you can avoid getting hit even if they're technically touching you with their elbow or penis or whatever. Try not to waste your stamina on random panic rolls, or you won't have enough to dodge when you actually need to, or when you need to hit them when they're open. And don't get greedy with those hits. Always leave enough stamina to roll away after hitting them, or these bosses will rock your ass. Some have compared the combat in the game to Guitar Hero or other rhythm games where you have to hit the buttons at just the right moment. Your rolls and dodges are also affected by equipment load. You want to keep it under 70%. 69.9% is fine, but any more and you'll be doing these slow, chunky rolls that'll get you quickly killed. For a lot of people that have never played any Dark Souls, you will instinctively try to roll away from enemies when they swipe at you. Knock that shit off. Sure, enemies can and will kick your teeth out if you get in their faces, but a good chunk of them still seem to have a bitch of a time hitting you up close. Like this spear guy who could be a pain in the ass for new players. His spear and shield combination make even being near this guy dangerous, but if you get up close to him, you can walk around him and backstab him. Stupid bastard. Even if you dodge, it's somehow better to dodge towards the attacks than away from them. You'll most likely not get hit and be close enough to actually hit them back rather than wasting stamina rolling away the whole time. So the enemies in Dark Souls 3 have no, as TV tropes would put it, mook chivalry. This is when the enemies in a game take turns attacking you. The enemies in Souls-like games are not like this. They will be very pragmatic and gang up on you if possible, all swinging shit at the same time. Even basic weak enemies can swarm and kick your ass quickly if you let them. Because of this, it's best to simply lure enemies out into one-on-one -on -one encounters if possible. It's better to focus on one enemy than three, regardless of how tough the enemies are. Don't start throwing all of your points into strength and then halfway through decide you want to use magic spells. It's going to consume way too much effort getting your magic on the same level as your physical strength. That effort could have instead gone to solidifying your melee damage. More often than not, you're better off focusing your strengths into one area, rather than taking a jack-of-all-trades approach. If you aren't all about going into games completely blind, I recommend looking up builds to help you make decisions to optimize your playstyle. By the way, this isn't really a leveling up guide, but for those perplexed by this math worksheet, just remember that Vigor is your health, Attunement is the focus points or blue bar, Endurance is the green bar, Vitality affects equipment load, Strength affects your damage with melee weapons, and it also lets you wield the heavier fancy ones later in the game. Dexterity also kind of helps with damage, but it also lets you wield some of the fancier weapons in general. Intelligence and Faith affect sorceries and miracles respectively, and both affect pyromancy. Luck affects your item discovery stat or how often enemies drop junk and give small bonuses to your various defense stats. I recommend choosing a weapon you kick the most ass with, and level your stats according to that weapon's needs. So let's say you've got all of this sweet loot, like 50 shields or something. I mean, this isn't 50 shields, but picture 50 shields. Unless you're gonna level up right then and there at Firelink Shrine, don't sell those shields. Since you lose souls upon dying, but not items, that means these items are kind of like a death-proof storage for extra souls. So keep your loot for when you're going to level up and get swole, but need a few extra hundred souls to get there. To 
Despite being somewhat linear in its design, there's a lot of space to explore around in Dark Souls 3. Little secret passageways tucked away that could very well be hiding some valuables, like Titanite or an Estus Shard. Sometimes you'll even find an NPC with cryptic dialogue, but they provide an essential service. Don't let the difficulty or the vague story turn you off of exploring these hidden areas, or you'll miss half of the game. This guy, Ludlith, is in Firelink Shrine from the beginning and transfuses boss souls into unique weapons when you give him a special kiln. I literally didn't know about him or what the kiln was for until one third of the way through the game because I wasn't exploring enough. The messaging system, like the rest of the game, is pretty vague. It only lets you piece together pre-written words and phrases to leave anonymous notes for other players to read. A lot of these messages written by others can help you avoid traps or ambushes, and some even point you towards hidden loot. Some of the notes are going to be opaque in meaning or even downright dangerous advice. So try to also be observant. Don't just walk off of a cliff because a message said there was treasure down there. A lot of games nowadays tend to hold the player's hand with all sorts of little quick saves and regenerating health and whatnot. Paraphrasing from TV tropes, Souls-like games are not afraid to kill you. Dark Souls 3 is no exception, but dying is actually okay in these games, and even more so in Dark Souls 3. From what I understand, Dark Souls 1 and 2 had a humanity meter that got lower every time you died, eventually making you into some kind of ugly zombie. That's not present in Dark Souls 3. So while dying a lot and learning from your mistakes has always been a staple of the series, Dark Souls 3 lets you get good at your own pace, while letting you maintain that sexy face regardless of how many times it takes you to kill this stupid fucking tree. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching, especially those of you who subscribed and stuck around while I did nothing for half a year. I really appreciate the support there. If you haven't already, please drop a like, maybe a comment. Subscribe if you'd like. I mean, I, I won't force you. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video, hopefully within a quicker time frame.